Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back for another edition of Investor Stories. On this special segment, the experts describe the most important lesson that they've learned and how that has changed the way they invest. This is the special segment called Lessons Learned. On today's special segment, we have Chris Olson of Drive Capital. Chris, can you tell us a story about a situation where you learned a critical lesson that has changed the way you invest? So we had a um, we had a, an entrepreneur that we met with out of uh, Beloit, Wisconsin. There's a woman named Carrie Frank, and Carrie is the founder of a company called Comply Three Sixty Five. And Carrie started out. She was prior to founding Comply. She was actually homeless, and she taught herself enough about the industry and and product management such that she could convince an engineering friend of hers to to build the first product. And she went into the airline industry with this first product to to sell um, called Republic Airways uh, to sell them on how they could use technology to remove the the cost and the friction of compliance and um, and they got her first customer. Then she went from there and she sold another uh, airline and, and she got to a place where she proved that she has the, the most dominant software in the airline industry. And then she's been able to take it from airlines into aviation and now more broadly into transportation. What we've learned from Carrie is that the traditional thought on this is that you can't sell to airlines. Airlines are, are terrible customers. And, and what she's proven is that they're great customers. They are fantastic partners to adopt these technologies. And in fact, by going in and really owning the airline industry, she's been able to build a, a bedrock foundation from which she's been able to continually invest in more engineering talent, more products that have now expanded her business into lots of industries. And, and she's doing a fabulous job. So I think she's, she's been a, a beacon of, of inspiration for us. So is the key lesson there to uh, go deeper on customer segments and not assume that they're traditionally bad customers if there's a compelling enough product? I, I think the lesson is listen to your customers. Listen to what your market <laughs> sells you. Right. Um, right. Don't listen. Don't listen to the VCs. You know, if if the airlines show up and they're ready to buy your product, sell them your product. They're great. Um, you know, if the VCs tell you they're bad customers, tell them you'll come back and talk to them later. Um, but you know, the idea that you would focus on, you know, and listen to whoever it is that that's showing up ready to buy your first products, I, I think is something that that's incredibly important. But you know, she she takes it to a whole new level. On today's special segment, we have Mike Collette of Promus Ventures. Mike, what's the hardest and or most important lesson you've learned through your experiences as a startup investor? Well, uh, maybe back to just that extraordinary people question. Just may I learn that extraordinary people can do extraordinary things. So uh, so invest in extraordinary people. I uh, Not to be flippant, but I just... When you see teams pull rabbits from a hat or move down a road that they never thought was going to work or stumble upon something as an afterthought, which turns into a $100 million business, right? That can only be done with extraordinary people, right? Who are listening and thoughtful and, and are thinking about this in the shower, right? I mean, if you're not thinking about it in the shower, it's just not that big of a deal to you. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, so I, I, I think... Try to get out of your MBA mindset or the list of things that you should tick off and focus on who those people are and what they've done and the passion and energy around what they're trying to solve. And listen, I mean, just being nice and fun isn't enough, right? But, you know, really ask yourself, do they have the fortitude to, you know, for what it takes to, to get to the other side? And um, that's, that's probably, you know, what I've learned through all these years. Is there a way that you better identify those folks up front? That's a good question. You know, I think characters, we talked about how really understanding, you know, that that person's life and understanding some of the hardships they've had and what they've done and how they've overcome those. I think really burrowing down in character is very important. I think that can tell you a lot. 
like I, 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 we just generally care about how, you know, where people grew up and what their relationships were with their parents and, you know, all these different things. Um, and, and it's not some rubric we th- come on back to the office and, you know, and spit out a number. It's, there is a gut in there that you just have to check. I mean, and, and a lot of this, I mean, a lot of what we do is an art, right? I mean, there's no cash flow analysis or comp company analysis. Uh, you know, you, you really have to just say, listen, do I trust this team? Do I think they're going to do everything they say they're going to do? And, um, you know, do we want to, do we want to back them and help them? And, uh, it just really boils down to that at the end of the day. On today's special segment, we have Anand Sanwal of CB Insights. Anand, what's one of the more important lessons you've learned about startups through your experience at CB Insights? Um, there's a lot of them. You know, I think, uh, can I give you two? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, the big thing is that I've seen, we scaled up pretty significantly in the last year. We were 22 people at the end of December 2014. We were 66 at the end, or 67 at the end of 2015. And so I think a lesson there is you're basically operating a different organization every three months when you're growing that fast. And so things that you didn't think were important become very important. So I used to be a pretty big skeptic of the whole culture thing, right? I thought it was sort of this like corporate way of trying to control people. And when it was five, 10 of us, you know, we all knew we all were mission driven, all got it as we grew, you know, we needed to kind of make sure the operating system of the company was sort of codified. So people who hadn't been around and who hadn't seen the crappy offices kind of knew how we are wired. You know, things like product management. I was sort of the de facto product manager as we've grown. And we have a bunch of engineers, like, you know, that just was inefficient for them. And finally kind of getting a product management organization in place. So I think just like that realization that what got you here won't get you there. And then I'd say like specific to startups is there's an incredible amount of noise in the ecosystem and not to get distracted by that. So I think, you know, and I'm a victim of it, right? So somebody gets funding and you're like, oh my God, they're a competitor. And you start tracking what they're doing and you don't realize, you don't think to yourself, like they've got zero revenue. We've got millions of revenue. We're doing something right. Like they should be following our lead. Yeah. you know, and kind of just thinking like, oh, they got VC money. That's this amazing validation. Like, you know, I think it took a while. And I think I used to spend some time thinking about and tracking competitors a lot. And then read this great quote by Jeff Bezos. He basically said, uh, you know, every minute that customers spend tracking us is one minute they're not spending thinking about customers. And so that was a great sort of epiphany in, in some sense of this is just wasted effort. I can't control what they do. I have supreme confidence that we will school everybody anyway. So like, why am I wasting my time doing this? But I think it is sometimes hard because there's so much noise in tech, especially these days to, uh, you know, to get sort of sucked into, into that sort of vortex. Yeah. I think it was about a year ago. uh, I noticed a company that went through a very famous accelerator that it looked as though they were copying your graphs almost exactly. And yeah. um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to name the company, but I remember yeah. thinking after I was frustrated seeing that at first, I remember thinking, you guys are smarter. You came up with it. You're way ahead. Copycats are just copying you, but they can they can never get into your head and they can never innovate the way that you have. So yeah. I actually and, thought and that... Just- yeah, I, I mean, we we wrote a whole post on that and got, you know, like kind of made, made a stink about it. But, you know, just to the the end of that story has already come because they've shut that down. So, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I think that sort of, uh, we thought it was inevitable, but yeah, I think I agree with you. Like if you're copying us, then uh, you obviously don't have a good plan of your own. Very fitting. That will wrap up this installment of Investor Stories. Head over to thefullratchet.net to leave a comment, sign up for the newsletter, or find resources discussed on any of the episodes. Until next time, remember to over-prepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for listening.